in, in the most core way. So again, there are different uh, variations to be, to be had. And then I'm going to go very quickly, as much as possible. Sorry, John. I'm taking forever. Uh, go through the revolutionary ethics that I hold, uh, which is Alain Badiou. Now, a brief background on Alain Badiou. Alain Badiou follows the psychoanalytic uh, philosopher, or anti-philosopher, if you please, of Jacques Lacan. Now, Jacques Lacan notice, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, Jacques Lacan notices, you say that fast, it sounds like a rapper name. Jacques Lacan. Yeah, um, he noticed something very interesting. Um, which is, it's not a matter, all deontological ethics, um, historically people have thought that duty was juxtaposed against desire. But what Lacan notices is, no, as a matter of fact, all duties that we have and we give to ourselves sustain our desire and in turn, right, our, uh, in turn generate the desire. Now, for Lacan, then, the fundamental ethical question is a question of giving in. And he forms this as betraying our desire. Um, and, of course, the very precise name for betraying one's desire is happiness. Because for Lacan, what our desire is, is a demand without satisfaction. To hold to your desire, to hold a duty to your desire, is not to have found an even place in the world, but to have a profoundly disjointed place in the world. One that is interrupted, that is circling, that is disrupted by desire itself. And so the duty that I will briefly talk about as the uh, superego or terror is merely the flip side of desire itself. So duty and desire are linked. And to give in, is to cease to desire, which doesn't mean to be want, right? You can want a lot of things, to be perfectly comfortable with your, uh, your Nintendo Wii and a crummy minimum wage job and a single apartment doesn't mean, right, you can want all those things or want a sandwich, right? But that's not the essence of desire, right? A desire is a demand without satisfaction. So let us move to the moment to revolutionary desire, which is best exemplified by the ontology of Alain Badiou, and I would recommend the theory of the subject. For these ethics, these are not an ethics of good and bad. Most deontologists, right, Kant believes that we're all subjects, we're all moral subjects. For Badiou, we are not all subjects. To be a subject is to be exceptional, and subjects themselves are transitory and easily disrupted. So what it means to give in is not to become a bad subject, an evil subject. To give in is to be not a subject at all. So what are the four virtues of Alain Badiou? Very quickly, they are anxiety against courage, the superego, later called terror, against justice. Now, what's important to note, it is not even though they are juxtaposed, it is not courage without anxiety. It is not justice without terror. But rather, all the virtues are the necessary components to generate a subject as such. So then let us conceive, what would a revolutionary subject be? Going generally. Anxiety for Badiou is the lack of a lack. Right? Lack being a desire. So what this is, is this is a truth as a whole. We are often presented with incredibly commonsensical truths. Communism is a failed system. So is anarchism, right? At every given point, we have the truth of our existence, which is that capitalism is the only system that will work. It is the dominant system. And to do anything otherwise is foolish. It's this overfulness of the truth of capitalism that generates within us anxiety. Because the capitalist demand, and I'm going to go a little bit out of, out of order here, is the superego, right? The law, the terror of capitalism. We are always 
impelled, or I, I'm sorry, yeah, no, yeah, that's right, um, and required and asked and exhorted to behave lawfully, right? And not just lawfully in the case that there's laws, right? But to behave in a certain way towards other people, right? For men, it is to objectify women. For women, it is to be objectified or sedu uh, to seduce men, right? This is the unspoken law of our sexual relationships. In our capitalist relationships, it is to have more money, to fight for uh, a better position, social position, to have a dominant social position, right? This is the very law of our society, which again, does not entail the pure legal aspect, but is rather the very super ego, right? The demand, the terror, the law that undergirds our society. So this law to have more, to be more, to buy more, to be, to enjoy more, generates an anxiety. Well, there are two other virtues. As a matter of fact, and, and this, is, this is an important thing, the vast majority of all people, the vast majority of all political parties, are only governed by these two features. The superego and anxiety. Look at the Democrats and Republicans. What are they governed by? The superego to win elections, right? Because they've reduced all of politics to electoral politics to hold more seats, to have the presidency, to have um, the Supreme Court, and the anxiety generated by that. So what are they missing? They are missing courage and justice. So what is courage? Courage is above all, and again, these are all linked, a call to justice. So what it is, is a recognition of the lack of a lack and a splitting of it. So what would courage mean today? Courage would mean Recognizing that we are inured in a capitalist system. We are unable to escape a capitalist system. And the law of our entire world and very existence is a capitalist law. And yet to call to something else. To recognize this. So it's important. You must, in order to be courageous, you must hold anxiety. There is no courage without anxiety. But you must call to justice. And what is justice? The justice, uh, okay, so going back to the superego, the superego is the very, uh, it's the, uh, again, I have the forcing consistency of being through law, but this is also the law as non-law. So let me do that, right? We have a law, but we will never satisfy it. We will never satisfy the capitalist demands on it. We will never satisfy the law of the demand for power, right? So the very law itself, the superego that is demanding us, is itself a non-law because it's uns insatiable, right? So what is justice? The justice is the recognition of the non-law in the law itself. To recognize that the law splits itself and that uh, to put it in a somewhat grandiose, uh, neo-leftist way, another world is possible, right? To recognize that this law is not the essential law, and to hold that justice is possible in the world. If you take all of these together, what you get? You get a subject. In politics, unlike social democracy, where it's a matter of just weighing general opinion, Unlike Negri, where it's a matter of individuals or group of individuals engaging in either communist acts or capitalist acts, or as a matter of fact, both in varying degrees. What a revolutionary subject is, is that which through anxiety exhibits courage against the superego, against the terror of society, to call forth a justice and then produces effects of this revolutionary subjectivity. So, to, and, and this is the important point, that itself is the ethics. To have a being, to have a subject. And to betray that is not to be a bad subject. To be, betray that is to not be a subject at all. And the revolutionary name for the subject in politics is the party. And this is the essence of Badiou's revolutionary ethics, which, again, I would hold.